Hi everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another YouTube video. I'm violinist Ray Chen and today I'm gonna to be unboxing and trying out a $69 violin that I got from the internet. Who knows how it's gonna sound, but you know, as they say, it's not about the instrument, it's about the player. Don't make me eat my words. Now I get asked a lot from many people, how much should I spend on an instrument? And honestly, the answer varies an incredible amount. It really depends on what you wanna do with the instrument and where you wanna take it. For example, uh, if you're just a beginner, I think spending $100, $200, $300 is perfectly fine because all you're doing is just learning how to hold the instrument and playing on open strings. Now, how far that instrument can take you really just depends on your dedication, your discipline, practicing, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, and so, you know, if you're just looking to learn the basics, play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, then honestly, don't spend too much. However, just to give you an idea, professional musicians and top level orchestras are usually playing on instruments anywhere from the $10,000 to $200,000 price range, and it goes up. If there's a particularly wealthy patron of the arts or donor who wants to uh, gift you or oftentimes loan you their instrument, those can be in the millions of dollars. And oftentimes soloists are on the receiving end of such instruments. On the other hand, conservatory level students who are in good schools like Juilliard, Curtis, you know, all the rest, Colburn, they're usually playing on instruments that they own. And those tend to be in the $5,000 to $30,000 price tag. So again, it's not a cheap hobby. It is a real profession. While you watch me struggle as I try to take the packaging off the violin case, I just wanted to let you know that I had some issues with the audio in the next part of the video. I thought about re-recording the whole thing, but then I realized that I was too lazy. And more importantly, I just wanted you to see me popping my $69 violin cherry. You know, some moments just can't be recaptured. Okay, so I just opened the case and inside there's a violin. Uh, there's also a bow that comes with it, a shoulder rest um, as well, and also a bridge. It, the bridge isn't set up yet, but that should be an easy fix. Wow. I. Wow, it even comes with a set of strings. And, um, you know, this is from Glary Violins, by the way. I've left the uh, description in the <laughs> and the link below in case any of you feel like trying a $69 instrument. Uh, but, you know, usually strings are already in like the $70 to $80 price range for a full set of strings. Not to mention a bow, which is probably in like $100, even for a cheap bow. Yet this whole thing, including the case itself and the shoulder rest, is only $69. I don't know what this stuff is made of. So basically the flat side faces towards the chin rest and the curved side faces towards the fingerboard. You wanna slide it in like this way. They don't even have markings in here, but you wanna set it up. You see where the F holes are, the, these parts of the F holes, where there's little, little the marking there. It's, it, it goes somewhere in there. So let's, let's have a go. Now you wanna make sure that the bridge is kind of center and you'll just have to eyeball it like I'm doing. Always take the bridge in two hands like this, uh, two fingers on either side. I have this phobia that the string is gonna break and snap into my eye. Oh gosh. But, and then you gotta, you gotta constantly check the bridge. See how this bridge is like slightly slanting forward? You wanna make sure that the back of it is straight. I don't even know what this wood is. It just feels so raw though. Do we have a rosin? We have a rosin! We have a tuner. We have a tuner as well? Wow! La la Oh yep, it says A, hey, you saw that? Alright, cool. It works. Nice. Rosin. Rosin is usually about like 20 bucks as well. I mean, some rosin's more expensive, 30, 40, 50. But this one. It's included. Everything's included. Hey guys, and we're back. I finally fixed the audio issues. Gosh, I'm so glad this wasn't a live stream. If so, it would have been a total boomer moment. But any case, I'm ready to test out the instrument. I think we should start with beginner level, then go to intermediate, and then advance, and then, I don't know, float around there. See what the instrument can handle. I also think that it's good that the instrument was sitting there for a while, because when you get a new instrument like this, and it's new setup, everything's new, you wanna just let the strings settle. Otherwise, it's just, you're constantly retuning the instrument and that's no fun. So, all right, here we go, beginner level. That's actually not too bad, wow, it's got a good ring. I 
think I've ever played on a violin, a full-size instrument that's cheaper than $100. Pretty good. Let's push it up a little bit and go into beginner intermediate. Not bad. It's a little bit wiry sounding, but I mean, so far, it's certainly exceeded my expectations. Cha cha, cha cha, cha cha, cha cha. Intermediate level. say that the instrument is currently handling all this stuff pretty well. Um, I think it's good to note that most beginner and intermediate level pieces don't feature any double stops or chords. Now let's try and get into a more advanced test where we actually try to put in some chords. Wow, not bad, not bad. It's sort of on the edge, I would say. I can feel it. I don't know if you guys can hear it, um, but it's a little bit uh, like uh, a little bit quavery, shall we say. Something's wrong with the G string. Because when I play it like that, it shouldn't change the pitch. It usually means that the string is what's at fault here. I can feel that the instrument wasn't made for some of the more advanced things that we're testing right now, but I can say that it's holding up pretty well. Certainly for beginner stuff, it is absolutely more than enough. Uh, intermediate stuff, I would say that, yeah, it can handle that all without any problems. Uh, it's when you get to the really advanced stuff that, okay, the instrument, it's starting to sort of collapse in certain on certain notes or uh, just there's just awkward uh, feelings, you know, as the bridge is just kind of like weirdly shaped and stuff like that. But I mean, I don't think the instrument was made for that. So for its own purpose, I mean, it's pretty, pretty, pretty solid. Let's try the third movement of Sibelius. That's pretty difficult. Okay, that G string sounds a little bit like a duck singing. <laughs>
so we had a lot of fun testing different pieces, uh, different levels of difficulty on this instrument. I would say that uh, for the beginner stuff, the intermediate stuff, no problem. Uh, as we get into the more advanced and higher level advanced stuff, it starts to, you know, uh, sort of collapse a little bit. But for, I would say, a beginner's purpose instrument, it is, I would say, actually, yeah, $69. I would rate it a pretty high level. It would be better if the grooves were already cut in um, and the G-string has to really be better. But yeah, the setup is, I think, gonna be a problem for a lot of people. Unless you know where to put the strings, it's gonna be pretty tough for normal people. Um, but then again, you know, you could easily have a friend who's a violinist set that up for you uh, and, and, you know, away you go. So all in all, not bad for an instrument that's under $70 and you get to learn at least how to hold it, everything works, all the sounds are coming out. Hey, it's not bad. So anyway, hope you enjoyed watching this video. Perhaps next time I can also compare this instrument to the Stradivarius. I think we all want to hear what that sounds like just to give you guys a reference. So thank you, stay safe, stay healthy, and see you next time, bye.